What on earth is that? Did you tune into the wrong channel? Or is that a knife box on the Apostle P channel that says Kaiser? Hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. Better stick around. This could be interesting. Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 7 March 2015. And there is not only a Kaiser knife box in front of my camera, uh, there's going to be a Kaiser knife in front of my camera in just a minute. This one, the KI-3304 Bravo. Let's just take a look at what's inside. I know this comes as a shock to many of you. Um, rest assured, I am not promoting Kaiser knives or any other Chinese knife brand, but in the in interest and feeling a sense of responsibility to be objective, we're going to look at one of these things. So let's, let's see what we got here. And uh, just so you don't need to watch all the way to the end if you don't want to, if you're feeling ill or your stomach's upset, um, I'm not going to give this knife a negative review or have a negative impression of it based on its quality because it's really well made. Having said that, I'd never buy one. And we don't need to rehash that, do we? So here's the knife, and we shall get to it in a moment. But first, I want to show you guys what's in the box. And as we go through some of this, um, if you are aficionados of American-made folding modern knives, or if you are a manufacturer or maybe a low-volume maker of high-end carry modern folders, you kind of might want to pay attention because uh, these guys are gunning for you. So let's see what's in the box. The box is nothing special, is it? It does say, interesting read, crafted with passion. Hmm. We could use a little more of that, couldn't we, Buck Kershaw? Okay. Nicely printed and simple literature. They give the address of the company, website, customer service email, Talk about their warranty, use and care, disclaimers, you know, clear to the point, written in English. <laughs> this piece of contents of the box, uh, this is what you guys might want to pay attention to. How about a couple extra screws? Would it be so hard? Would it really, really, my little Viper... Vox Odino, made in Italy, uh, you know, a couple screw heads snapped off during reassembly, and I emailed Viper Knives, and they told me in a very polite Italian way that are impossible to find, you should call your retailer. Really? Um, yeah, so I had to re-sleeve them and <laughs> basically reconfigure the hardware. How hard would it be for you manufacturers on modern folders that are commonly disassembled, cleaned, maintained, and reassembled, even pimped maybe. How hard would it be to include just a couple extra screws? You know we're taking the knives apart anyway. <sighs> hmm. This is why you're in trouble. Okay, now the knife. Pretty sexy name, the KI-3304B. And this knife represents sort of the uh, uh, the bridge in evolution of the Chinese modern folder. This is uh, not a gas station knife. It is not a direct ripoff of an American knife complete with logos, packaging, and everything. It is not a particularly original design and identified as such. This is something in between. This is a knife that takes its cues, styling cues, from 
at least one American knife that I can think of. But it's really not the same. And the, the, knife, the knife that I'm talking about, or the company that I'm talking about, is Guardian Tactical. This blade shape, very reminiscent of their Patron or Patron, however you say it, uh, reviewed on the Apostle P channel. The blade grind a little different. This is all very high hollow grind. Uh, the Guardian Tactical knife was uh, flat at the base and hollow at the tip, which frankly never made sense to me. Um, even the handle, very, very similar in shape to the Guardian Tactical Blades. Um, you know, <laughs> it does speak to a little disconnect that's probably cultural. You know, some uh, designer at the Chinese Kaiser plant um, thought this is what Americans thought was a cool knife. Um, <laughs> not a Sebenza or a Hinderer XM18 or a Strider, but a Guardian Tactical. You know, it has the most dramatic, albeit silly, lines of any of those I mentioned. And frankly, it's odd to look at. Um, has not very good ergonomics, not horrible, but just you know, it obviously is not a knife that was designed with ergonomics in mind. It was designed to look like something Americans would buy. Um, having said that, although it's odd and it's a little funky and it's not very ergonomic, um, I'm going to talk about some things that really gets right. Because uh, we Americans, we American knife companies, um, better step it up. Right now, you guys are losing customers to these guys. These guys. And you're still making pretty good knives. They're not making very good knives yet. Uh, wait till they're making products as good as yours at half the price. Uh, American knife consumers have already proven they're not loyal to their country. They're not loyal to free market countries that have you know, knife tra knife making traditions and fine craftsmen. They're not loyal to any of that. If they can get uh, some titanium, some super steel, some ball bearings, maybe a flipper, uh, and it looks pretty cool and it costs a little bit less than y'all's stuff, um, they're leaving you without really even a twinge of guilt. So better step it up, American knife companies, German knife companies, Italian knife companies, Taiwanese knife companies, or the chai comms, as Rush Limbaugh would say, are going to eat your lunch. Okay, now let's talk about some specifics. The steel is listed on the blade tang as S35VN. Um, guys, I, and this, by the way, guys, is not my knife. This belongs to a, a subscriber, Izzy, and uh, he asked if I would like to spend some time with it, review it, and put a quick edge on it. I did put a quick edge on it, um, and I can tell you this, you know, I, I did not uh, take a sample and <clears throat> run a gas chromatograph test on it. I did not Rockwell test it. I did sharpen it, and I'm here to tell you it behaved exactly like S35VN. It's definitely not 8CR. Uh, it's not 440A. Good stuff. The amount of time I had to spend on each grit, the nature and color of the slurry it generated, just like S35. Hmm. Talk about this blade shape a minute. Although the shape is pretty odd, the profile top to bottom is pretty cool. Uh, it's made from 120,000 stock, by the way. Three and seven sixteenths inches long, handle four and a half. So just shy of eight inches in overall length. Wicked slicing blade. You know, the, the spine they got all wrong, I think. But, um, you know, we're, we're at a uh, 
a nice graceful drop point, even a more standard Bowie. I mean, this is like a ha cross between a reverse Tonto and a Bowie. Kind of weird. Uh, not Doesn't appeal to my eye. But it's also uh, 26 thousandths thick behind the edge. It came sharpened at about 21 and a half degrees per side, which I just replicated. Um, I want you to take a close look at the width of my edge bevel tip to hill. Uh, it doesn't change much. Very well ground knife. In the stone wash finish there are not any grind lines I can find. The only hit I'm going to give it, and you guys are used to me giving this hit. And I, I did not do any rework on this area on purpose. Uh, plunge grind and ricasso. See that sort of steepened unsharpened heel at the base of the edge I just you know no reason that 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 the Ricasso couldn't have extended another eighth of an inch you know like a, like a Sabenza would have been perfect but <laughs> the Chinese imitate the Americans once again don't they guys uh, all you American makers be thankful this Kaiser exhibits that the Chinese can suck as bad at doing a ricasso and a plunge grind as you guys can. <laughs> I hate to say it, but uh, it's true. Anyway, uh, how about the handle? Titanium, frame lock. Uh, we assume it's 6AL 4V titanium. Frankly, it looks like it. It feels like it. Um, lock bar tension feels like pretty linear, like titanium feels, you know. The action, the deployment is via thumb stud only. A little, a little hard to get used to. The thumb, thumb studs are kind of funky. Not, not like anything we use. It looks like a, like a Schrader valve for a, a tire, doesn't it? A little bit. You know, it works though. That was a misfire on my part. Uh, the detent is plenty adequate. That light blade is not going to fall out of there. You know, it gives you thumb tension without thinking about it. You really don't have to work at it to make the knife snap out with the thumb studs. The knife is on bearings. Um, excuse me. Yes, it is on bearings. Flat phosphor bronze bearings, a.k.a. washers. There you can see them. Uh, this just in. Phosphor bronze washers work just fine. <laughs> Super smooth. I mean, like Spider Co. Sage smooth. Uh, let's see. I'm going to unlock it and drop this down to the detent ball. Check for side play. There is none. Locked up. Up and down play. There is none. Uh, it does have an over travel stop or a lock bar stabilizer, whichever you prefer. It is not a free dropper. It, this knife is not set up to drop free. But, you know, it doesn't really, the blade's really light. But, uh, it doesn't need to drop free. Um, it handles pretty well once your hand gets used to it. How about the blade centering? Mm, yeah, you are, your eyes are not deceiving you. It's perfect. Uh, other than being goofy, I can't fault this knife. Oh, does it cut anything you think? Now remember the edge geometry, a little thick, uh, 21 and a half degrees per side. So what's that? 43 degrees inclusive. Um, so it's not going to have the, you know, that thin apex that a great slicer would have, but because the the hollow grind is so gradual and it's so thin behind the edge, I would imagine it cuts okay. It's not the not the quietest thing I've ever heard going through the catalog paper. And that is because of the edge angle, as was well that poor S curve cut. Um, were this my knife and I wanted to spend some real time with it? I would reprofile it to standard spider co geometry, 15 degrees per side secondary bevel with a 19 or 20 degree micro. 
and it would rip through that paper silently, slash through it silently. It's very sharp, however. Um, took a pretty fine edge with a really nice polish. Let's see if I can get you guys a good macro of that. Let me change my light here a little bit. Maybe that'll be better. Oh yeah, much better. You know, just not bad. Let's look at this handle, some pretty complex milling. 3D machined as we say. Pocket clip is adequate. Um, behaves a lot like a Sebenza clip without the sort of double divot in it. Um, goes in and out of the pocket very easily. Adequate retention, easy to reinsert one handed. It is tip up, tip down, womp womp, right hand only. The machining, the finishing, the fit and finish on the handle, uh, no issues. Looks like a titanium backspacer. I did not take this knife apart, nor am I going to, so I really can't speak to hardware quality. Um, <laughs> they're either very nice to us or they don't think much of their hardware because they did give us two extra screws. The pivot has a custom look, but it looks like it can be serviced with a flat blade screwdriver. Uh, how about the lock geometry? I think this is kind of interesting. Notice the almost zero slope from left to right on the tang of that blade. Not sure. There's a pretty fair amount of tension on this lock bar, but those angles are cut so straight I can move that lock bar in pretty easy uh, doing so though I don't get much stick just a little bit don't know how that's gonna wear um, as it does wear it will move to the right quickly because of the lack of angle um, angle of blade tang in this direction instead it's almost straight across this direction don't know how that's gonna play out over time but I don't think a lot of these knives are gonna get used and abused. They're going to spend a lot of time as pocket jewelry at the mall, I imagine. Um, I don't love it, but I'm not going to bag on it either. Um, it's a nice effort. Clearly the design eye of the Chinese knife manufacturer is a little goofy to me as an American even when they're trying to sell me something that I would like. But I bet if I were 21 and I watched a lot of YouTube knife channels and I found out I could buy this radical knife for like 130 or 40 bucks. Titanium S35 VN frame lock. I'd probably be all over it. So heads up, uh, American knife companies, European knife companies, Japanese and Taiwanese knife companies, uh, they're coming for you. Better have a rifle between, behind every blade of grass, my friends. That's all for tonight. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp. <laughs>